window that I've opened, I'm going to raise the Z, blue up arrow. I'm, I'm keeping in mind right now, how high do I need to be to get good access to that tool under there? Six, seven, eight inches, something like that. I'm going to now position the carriage more to the middle so it's a little easier to work, a little more elbow room, and I'm going to bring it closer to me and to help me uh, with the tool. Underneath this skirt, there's already a tool in there, and I'm going to change it to the tool that I'm going to select for making my part, which will match in our code. So in our electrical panel, there's a key. You take out the key, voila, there's one of our two very important tool removal wrenches that will always, one of them will always be hanging, the other one is over in our tool area. So I come over. But before I remove the tool, I have to take off the dust skirt. I'm going to bring the tool down. I actually was, the tool was a little bit too high, which may as well happen to you. And there's a little set screw back there. There we go. Bring the tool back up. So let me review. You, you want the tool low enough to remove the set screw to take the dust skirt off. Then I brought the tool back up, now that that is um, out of my way. Now that your Z has been lifted, dust skirt removed, we take our two wrenches, and underneath here are two nuts that work opposite each other to loosen. One goes on the bottom nut, one goes on the top, and I just turn in the direction to loosen, which I have to remember which way, ah, there. It shouldn't be that hard to remove, so if you're going in one direction, it's very, very difficult. Try the other direction. It shouldn't be that hard. Unscrew it, and I have in my hand the collet that threads in. The collet in this particular case is a quarter inch, which matches the shank size of this particular bit. I'm also going to be using a quarter inch. If there are some end mills that are half inch, three eighths, and you would have to have the matching collet. But in this case, the quarter is correct. So I'm going to go get my other bit. I put the collet back into place. You don't want to fully tighten it. Have the tool. Now you tighten it by hand as much as you can. Come back. One wrench on the bottom, one wrench on the top, and just snug it. You don't have to go too strong. Just nice snug. It's not going anywhere. And that's how you change a tool. After your tool is in place and tightened, we put the dust skirt back on. There's a little port back here that slides up to the top. A little set screw in the back that you'll you have to be here to see, but you just turn it until you feel it catch. Give it a nice little push and the dust skirt's back on and that's how you load a tool. Everything's ready on the machine, so now it's to the program. Uh, so we already talked about there's a shop bot program for, for, for jogging the head around, but now we're going to another program called Partworks. Partworks is, uh, also came with the shop bot, but this is the program where you set up your workpiece, what pockets you're doing, the text, etc. And that is an icon also on the desktop. When we have the uh, program open, we go to File, New, just like you do with all programs, and we get what's called Job Setup. And, and at this point, this is where you need to be thinking, or you should know a little bit ahead of time of what you're making. And in this case, what I'm going to do today, um, nice cheap old 2x4, I'm going to write ASU Poly. In, into this board, a real simple text operation. You could do pocketing, you could do uh, complicated scroll work, all depending on you know what program you're bringing in or what tool you're using. Also, if you do de design something in a SolidWorks CAD program, if you look straight at your part, in other words, normal to it, so not skewed, but normal to it, and hit Save as DXF, it will capture whatever lines in your uh, SolidWorks part and save them as vector lines. Why would you want that? That's something that you could import into this program that our tool could follow. It could do a pocket with it, contour, all types of different operations. But today I'm just going to type text on this board and cut some letters. So uh, one of the first things I need to do is measure the length of the board. 
24 inches by three and a half. It's very important to know your work area. Thickness, one and a half inches. So in my job setup that pops up, we're gonna have a height of 24 in inches, width of 3.5, and it also says thickness 1.5. If you look on the screen, that's my board. Now as we did with the jog, this monitor is basically, it is the shop bot surface turned up 90 degrees, like just like this. Just like if you were to just take the machine and lay it on the wall. So if you look, this board is horizontal. I'm sorry, vertical. It will be that same orientation in the machine. That's important. This, it's just almost like you lay it down exactly like that on the workpiece and you'll see that in a few minutes. So we're happy, we hit OK. And now we're ready to create our test. So I'm gonna type in ASU Poly, all capital letters. Um, you can click here if you want and pick your text. I'm gonna do a nice, simple, bold text. And I'm, and I'm going to even make it more bold by clicking bold. Uh, I'm trying to put my tool inside the letters. So I want a nice, simple, thick text. Height of the letters, I'm going to put 2.5. And apply. Now that I've entered my text, I'm going to drag it to the location I want. And put it freely anywhere. You could also put dimensions, but I'm just going to put it somewhere nice in the middle of the board. Uh, FYI, when I first entered my text, it kind of popped it off the screen. So if you enter something and it disappears, it may just be that it's off the screen a little bit. You need to zoom out and move it. So that's a nice location there. We're done with our 2D entering of lines, or in this case text, and I'm ready to switch over to the toolpath creation information, which is this little blue arrow right here. If you notice, all the buttons now are on the right-hand side. That's toolpath. I can go back to drawing tab, and that's on the left. Right hand is toolpath, left hand is the uh, art creation. I have everything selected, and I come over here, and my choices are profile or pocket. Profile would be if I wanted to cut outside the lines. I'm going to do a pocket on the inside, so I click pocket. Okay, at this point, we have to select our tool, so I'm going to select. We want a quarter inch straight. That's what I'm, I put in there. All the feeds and speeds and how fast it spins, I let the computer uh, tell me that. And you can also tell it the material. It defaults to wood, which is what I'm using. But if, let's say you were using a plastic, you can choose that material and it will tell you how fast to move and spin the cutter. It takes all the pressure off of you. So I'm just gonna leave all the settings. I hit okay. Uh, up here it says cut depth. Well, the board itself is an inch and a half. I'm just going to go about maybe half inch deep, 0.5. And that's it. Calculate. There aren't more settings, but for what we're doing today, that's, that's all we need.